to you from Bell Direct. Bradkins lowered its full year profit guidance. Um, what do you think the market will make of that? Is this kind of expected? Uh, I think Bradkin, Bradkin shares will probably fall today, possibly 2% or more. Uh, they have lowered their full year guidance for 2012. Um, EBIT DAR now expected to come in between 210 and 220 million, which was below previous expectations of over around 242 million. They've also downgraded their net profit after tax expectations to uh, 95 to 102 million. Now that's down from somewhere around 112 million. So uh, this is really coming through from their rail division. Uh, Bradkin operates four main divisions, industrials, mining, rail and engineering services. And they did outline two factors uh, that are contributing to this downgrade. Uh, one's a one-off cost increase of 35 million, uh, of 16 million, sorry. And the other one is a, a loss of sales volume of 16 million. Uh, these are both from new contracts uh, in their rail service divisions, which required new designs, which increased costs and also delayed uh, these, uh, these projects getting going. So um, their other divisions, they did say, are on track. Uh, really, the main driver for Bradkin going forward will be their mining services division. Uh, mining services, engineering products, they said, are on track. Um, obviously, the driver for Bradkin will be mining capital expenditure moving forward. They are very leveraged to mining services and providing goods to the mining services. So they are positioned well in that respect. But I would expect to see some weakness in both Bradkin and uh, mining services stocks today in the market. What do we look for in all of that, Tim? And uh, what's the view on, on that sector at the moment? Well, I haven't had a look at, at these numbers yet, but uh, as you said, sales grew for food and liquor around 3% year on year. I'd be interested to see uh, how it's grown over the previous quarter and just from December 2011. Often year on year results don't give the best indication of how the business is really going. But what we have been seeing in this staples industry um, is some significant uh, price wars uh, between Coles and Woolies. You know, I've seen uh, milk through fruit and veggies. Now, yesterday we saw news from Coles about this new flybys program, which mm. looks to be the next uh, next playing field for the war between the supermarkets. Now, um, Audi have been making a bit of inroads into the supermarket industry here in Australia, but uh, Coles and Woolworths combined still make up something around 75% or something of market total market share of, um, of supermarket sales in Australia. So uh, they have controlled this industry for a long time. And it'll be interesting to see those results compared to fourth quarter, how they've grown food and beverage, how their stores are going um, in different regions, different areas. Uh, but it looks uh, like they have managed to grow food and retail. Um, that will be good because trading conditions are tough at the moment. Obviously, investors, I'm um, sorry, consumers are looking to save at the moment. Uh, those staples you would expect to be performing better than sort of more discretionary retailers. Um, perpetual having increased funds under management and uh, challenge are the same. What's the view on these stocks? By 3.5% um, from the March quarter, from the previous December quarter. So that's now around 23.7 billion. They had an 800 million net increase in funds. That was from a $1.6 billion gain from market returns, but um, concerningly $8 million in outflows from their businesses. As many of their unit holders sort of moved from a, an accumulation stage to a sort of redemption phase uh, in their investments, uh, moving into a retirement, et cetera. Now, uh, Perpetual do have a new CEO, Jeff Lloyd. Uh, his mandate clearly has to be in cut costs and to reduce their cost base. But for businesses like Perpetual, um, key risks for these kinds of businesses is human capital. We saw them lose their top stock picker recently, uh, John Sevier. Now, um, it looks like they have had one of the best performing Australian equities funds for a, fund for a while now. Um, it looks like it will continue as they do have plenty of senior investment analysts there. But that's what drives these kinds of businesses, top stock pickers, being able to outperform the market. Um, Challenger also rose their funds under management. Their annuity business uh, really starting to take off again. I think re sales in that business was up 23%. Um, same story sort of here. We're seeing baby boomers moving into retirement. Uh, when they do so, they're looking for uh, more income rather than accumulation. And that's where these annuity style investments really are very good. So a lot of concerns around Challenger recently um, in terms of capital requirements moving forward with new regulatory uh, requirements. It looks like they will be increasing their capital by somewhere 90 to $100 million this year to take up their total capital to over $900 million. So that's a positive for the business. And it does Challenger does look to be moving back on track now, increasing their sales in that annuity business, which they do specialise in. Uh, so that stock, I think, will perform pretty well over the next few days. Well. Tim, um, any thoughts on the local market today or maybe even your own view on, on bank stocks? Uh, well, I think a flat, a flat start was expected. Uh, though I think we probably should outperform US and European markets. We saw them fall half and 1%.
overnight. And I think our market will do better than that today, though movements will be probably pretty subdued, really. Uh, the US data was disappointing, actually. Uh, after we saw late last year and even early this year, really US economic data was performing a lot better than what people were expecting. We're just seeing a bit of a moderation in that now. So these jobless claims a few weeks in a row now have been a little bit disappointing. And also US home sales last night disappointed the market. Uh, we also saw those, uh, those bond auctions in Europe. Um, I think Spain's looked quite good. The demand was strong. Obviously, yields were increased, but that was to be expected anyway from their last auction in January. It was clearly below by that 6% level. What was probably a little more concerning was uh, France's auction, where they were targeting 11 billion euros, but they only managed to ra uh, raise 10.5. And, and their yields actually rose after rumours surrounding a French downgrade. Uh, and the reports from the likes of Citigroup saying they will be downgraded in the last couple of years. Uh, but the market today will be probably pretty flat. It'll get probably a little bit of strength and support from the financials. They'll probably perform okay today. I think we'll see a little bit of weakness in the miners, though, which will weigh on the market a little. But um, as Peter said, not much happening today, probably waiting for next week.